Detective Nua Lualamaga will tell you the details of the shooting. On April 28, 2010, at approximately 9.30 p.m., East Palo Alto Police Department had received a phone call regarding a shots fired call along the 100 block of Jasmine Way in the city of East Palo Alto. Upon arrival, officers discovered a 20-year-old Hispanic male East Palo Alto residence by the name of Gabriel Arublin. He had suffered multiple gunshot wounds to the upper torso. Later, medical aid was summoned to his assistance. Fire Department and American Medical Response paramedics had responded and rendered aid. He was later transferred to Sanford Hospital, where he later succumbed to his injuries. Currently, we do have an established motive, and we are looking into further leads. Thank you, Detective. Jasmine Araguin, Gabriel's sister, and Carla Valencia, Gabriel's sister-in-law, have agreed to join us to talk to us about Gabriel's life and as well as to talk about the trauma of his death. So thank you both for thank coming you. on thank to make you. the call. Um, so starting with you, Jasmine, um, you're his sister. Yes. Um, how did you find out that your brother had been shot and then killed? It was at night. Uh, I had gone off work. I got home and a friend came to off my gun door saying that um, he thought Gabriel got shot. Gabriel got shot. So mom, he gave my mom a ride, and then uh, me and my husband got in the car, and we drove to the scene. And what did you? What happened when you got there? And when we got to the scene, like we couldn't really get in, so I ran out my 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 car barefoot, and then we ran over there. But they had already taken them to the hospital. So your brother was gone when you got there. Yeah. And were there still police there? A lot of people. Yeah, there were still police there. And then what happened? What did you do then? So then from there we, I went back home and I grabbed my daughter, and then they told us that they're already at the hospital. So then we drove to the hospital. And then we're, what? And then so we're waiting, and then finally a, um, a doctor came out and was like, oh, that he died. So then we just, all, like, we were shocked at first, and then that we just all started crying. Everybody. But was your mom there? My mom, his friend, all his friends were at the ho really? at, at the hospital, just like crying, bawling out, like why did it happen? Like it was just shock. Like you wouldn't think, cause that the day before I was with them and we had went to go buy some cookies for my mom, and then this is like shocking that like, you can't believe it. You're in shock. So one day he's there, and the next and day he's, he's just gone. gone. And and how old was your brother? He was uh, twenty years old. Just twenty. Yeah. Wow. Well, he's a year younger than me. Wow. Well. And uh, Carla, how did you find out? Well, Ishmael's my husband, Gabriel's brother. He, Edward called Ishmael and told him, oh, Gabriel got shot. So my husband just thought, oh, you know, it was probably like to his leg or right. something simple that. Not serious. Not mm -hmm. serious. He, but he still rushed to the hospital and I stayed home with my children. And um, then Ishmael called me that he was there waiting for them to come out and say stuff. But I had a bad feeling. Really? So I asked my grandma to watch my children and I asked my brother to rush me over there. And I got there and when I got there, they came out and said that he was gone. Wow, it's horrible. So, yeah. I, I mean, and this is probably, you know, a, a very, I, I think I know the answer, mm -hmm. but I think I, I wanted you to tell me in your own words, what has it been like knowing that your brother, brother-in-law was, was, was murdered. It was, well, for How me, it was shocking. Out? It was hard. Like, as, when I was on the way to the hospital, like, I felt like he had asthma. So I was like, like, I can't breathe. I was, I was telling him, I was like, something, I was like, he, I was like, it's, he's, like, I felt it. Like, I was like, like, wheezing, and I was like, something's wrong, something's not. So it was like, I don't know, it was just hard, like, were you real close to your brother? Oh, well, yeah. He was always young. We were always together. Like, I would take care of him. He would take care of me. He had problems at school. I was like the brother, kind of. Right. So I'd like take care of him. Right. I don't, we were just always together in pictures. We have a lot of pictures together. We were close. He was a loving brother. He was there for me, wow. my daughter. Like. Right. So talk, you just mentioned pictures. There are a lot of pictures of yes. you and your brother. We have some photos mm -hmm. of your brother here. So why don't we take a look at some of the photos and you tell me what, what's happening in that photo. You see it up there? This is his graduation. And he was receiving his diploma there. And it was from his, where? From Terabella High School. Wow. 
Wow, looks happy. Yeah. And uh, I think we have another photo. Who's th and that's oh, Gabriel that's on the brother. left. That's, that's Fernando. And that's also at his graduation after when oh, we wow. came out. How many brothers did Gabriel have? It was have? it's six of them with yeah. him really? not here. Really? And I think there's one more. There's This was one. at the rehearsal dinner of his older brother Juan. And that's um in the black it's my husband Ishmael, his brother, that's and his brother. Jose Eduardo, the youngest of all of them. Wow. And these are all brothers, yes. right? Yeah. His brother's there. And I think we have one more photo. Now, what's this? That's the wedding of his brother. That's Juan, his older brother, that got married wow. the for the rehearsal. Oh, wow. his, uh, oh. So he, he looks like such a, a mm -hmm. nice young man and, and happy. I mean, what was he like? Tell me. He Just was nice. baby he, brother. So. He worried about everybody. He worried about her, me. He took care of all of us, his nieces. Like, oh, Gabriel, take us to see the pet store. He worked at PetSmart. So he'd be like, oh, because he loved animals. He had so many animals. Really? Chickens, chameleons. Uh, Any we have a, animal you could think really? of. Really? He, he had chameleons, like parrots. His, the pit bull we have. It, we had it for so long. Parrots, uh, which I let it out. It flew out. <laughs> oh, next. Oh, oh next. And it was a, um, oh. we had every animal, like he had a godfather. Like if he asked him for a, a pet or whatever, they'll buy for him. We had every pet, rabbits. We, really? Like, I don't know, that made him happy, like nice. animals. So it sounds like he's very caring. I mean, yes. he yeah. cared for the pets, he, he cared for you caring. all. Everything. My mom, like every picture you see, he's always like this with my mom. Really? They're always like, he loves my mom. He took care of her so much. How's your mom doing since all of this? She's shocked. She's sad. Like, why would they take her son? Like, it's any mother. They'll feel bad. Like, why would you take somebody's son? You have a right. brother. You have a, a, it's your nephew. Your, why would you do that? Right. What if that was you or, you yeah. know? Right. So, you know, the purpose of this, this program, Make yeah. the Call, is that we hope that your story about your brother and your brother-in-law touches somebody who had some information, who knows something, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what, would you, what do you want to say right now to the person or the people who may be watching this program who have some information, who haven't come forward and talked to this detective? If you know anything, uh, if you were there or if you heard something, Go to the police, or if you don't have to go to the police, uh, go to the website or make the phone call to. Um, yeah. Um, just call, like don't be scared. Make don't, you're not gonna be a snitch or anything. Just let the, like if you know something, call the police or email them or go to their area where they're at and let them know. Cause that was my brother. What if that was your brother? And just we miss them and we love them. We want justice to be served. We want that person to get caught. Right. In, in, in Carla, so what if somebody were to say, well, I know something, but I'm afraid to say anything. What, well, what do you say to that person? And then maybe that person's watching the show, and they're just afraid. I'm sure that person has a sister. What if that was your sister? You would want that person to get the justice. You, what if you lost your sister, your brother, the same way we lost our loving brother? I mean, would you want the same thing to happen to you? You want that person to get caught. You want that person to get caught. So, I mean, it's not something bad that they're doing. They're going to get this person to get justice for what he did. Right. So do you have, um, are there other family members? That, again, I, I want you, I know your mom's not here, mm -hmm. but if she were here, what do you think she would say? She would just <coughs> want people to come forward. Don't be afraid. She would just want them to, uh, if they know anything, to come go to the police. Like, if they know anything... There's a lot of people out there. I'm sure there was somebody that knows something. They need to come to either Detective Noir or call the hotline or something if they don't want their name to be brought up. And they won't be, if they're afraid because their name's going to come up, it's not going to come up. They just, police want to know what, what's going That's on. That's right, because it can be anonymous. Yeah, it's right? anonymous. You don't even have to say. So it just must be very frustrating for you all. I mean, it's been more than a year. Yes. yes. And, and his birthday's on Tuesday. His birthday is yeah. coming up, and he would have been... 22. And, and no one has come forward. And that's, that's how crimes get solved, right? Yes. And that's how this murder is going to get solved. It really needs somebody to come forward. So um, I, I know that it's hard for you, uh, the family members, for you all to talk publicly about Gabriel. So I, I thank you for coming forward. And, and hopefully with the help of someone who was watching this program, Gabriel's killer will be brought to justice. So to Jasmine, to to Carla, thank you so much thank for you. Being, having the courage to come forward. And we hope that people out there will have the courage to come forward too and solve this crime. And 
That's what it's about, making the call, 1-888-MURDER-0, or text. That's right, you can now text a tip. You can do it anonymously by texting your information to this number, 650-409-6792.